Hi and welcome back. In the last video, I shared a little about how you create that there is reality. And in today's video, I'd like to zoom in a bit more and share a bit about how you create your reality. The real heart of consciously creating your reality is difficult to explain or even point to as you can't see it, hear it, taste it, smell it, touch it, or even think it. The centermost mechanism, if you will, is focus. Not your focus, per se. Not in the sense you could, should, or need to focus more or harder or effort in any way, but the regular old focus which is present now as it is. The intangible presence or simply that there is focus. So what is focus? In the previous video, I talked about infinite being appearing as the sphere of the world and of the lens. You might say this appearance is a vibrational concentration of a consciousness, and the effect or result is what I'm pointing to here with the word focus. Try not to think of focus as strictly something you do, but much more so as an appearance which is, in a sense, already being done for you. While it definitely seems there is a separate physical you and a separate physical world, one of the ways you can inspect this in your direct experience in regard to focus is to scrutinize your peripheral vision. This is not about straining or efforting or figuring anything out. This is really just noticing what is already the case. In thought, there seems to be two, what is seen and what is not seen. Keeping the spheres in mind, what I am proposing here is that the experience of seeing is an appearance and that what is not seen is only actually the thought that something is there which is unseen. To begin to recognize there isn't actually this duality or two-ness that thoughts imply. Just relax your eyes and bring your attention to your peripheral vision and look for the actual edge or line, the literal divide between what is seen and what is not seen. What you'll begin to notice is that there is no actual dividing line of any kind present to be found. There is the implication of a dividing edge in thought, but this is not found in perception because perception, like experience, is the effect or result of the appearance of the spheres. How does this relate to focus and how you create your reality? One way to consider the implication here is to realize you cannot experience what you are not focused upon. And you can only experience what you are focused upon. Because you are always creating your reality and are doing so flawlessly, it literally goes completely unnoticed. While in thought it seems you move in terms of location, from here to there for example, you can recognize that you never actually experience a there though. Where you are is always here and always now. For example, if I were to send you an address to meet me at, in thought or in communication, you might say, I'll be there in an hour. But in actuality, you would only experience a here the entire time. You would never actually be there. Likewise, time seems to exist in thought. We experience motion and change and we apply thoughts about time passing, but in actuality, the entirety of experience is an appearance. Notice you never experience a there and you never experience a past or a future, only ever now or here. The insight I'm hoping to communicate is this is because you are not at all just the person in the world, but that which is appearing as the entire experience by appearing as the spheres. And that focus is much more than commonly thought, that it is a literal directing of creating reality or experience. In communicating things of this nature, I've found the words only go so far, and having a visual aid can really help in connecting the dots. So I'm going to cut now to a short illustration I made which might help some insights arise in regard to this topic. So the blank white canvas represents formless infinite being or unconditional love. And because infinite being is infinite, for infinite being to experience, it has to be the experience. 
and in being the experience it forgets that it is infinite being. Being absolute perfection, infinite being creates that there is experience in the most efficient way possible. For there to be experience, there must be somewhere the experience transpires, so it appears as somewhere for the experience to be, or the sphere of the universe or world. And there must be some way of being aware of the somewhere. So it appears as the sphere of the lens by which it experiences the world it is being. Saying the lens is synonymous with saying focus. As what we call focus is awareness appearing as the lens and experiencing through the lens. It is because awareness is formless and infinite that we experience zooming in and zooming out, if you will, in terms of mind and focus. Though we cannot see, hear, touch, or taste, focus. Similarly, the appearance of the two spheres and the experience created intrinsically is what perception is. Perception is like focus in that it is more the effect or appearance than something we could point to in a literal physical sense. Another word which points to infinite being is infinite intelligence. As infinite intelligence is appearing as the lens, through the lens, Intelligence seems to be one finite thought at a time. Thought is experienced as private because it appears as, of, and within the lens, which is focus. Thus, we can focus on or not focus on an arising thought. In regard to today's topic, there are essentially two thought paths, or if you will, two kinds of thoughts. A thought about what you want to create and experience, which resonates or feels aligned with your true nature as love and as a creator, and a belief which in comparison feels off or in discord with the true nature of being. Bearing in mind the difference between the truth and a belief is that one of them are true. A belief isn't aligned with the truth that you are creating, and as such it creates a thought loop and a belief is experienced as a thought which is repeating. You might say it is looking for alignment with what is true and actual. Beliefs also shape our interpretation of ourself and of our experience, and considering the feeling of discord of a belief, more beliefs are often created in an attempt to make sense, as in aligned feeling with the true nature in regard to the belief. On the other hand, when we focus instead on a thought of what we want to create an experience, which is aligned with feeling, or the true nature, we create change in our lives and in our world, and we realize insights or truth about ourself and our experience. We feel better, existence makes more and more sense, our outlook changes, and momentum of this good feeling builds, and we are creating what we desire to. By focusing on what we want to create, what we want in the literal sense comes into focus. Why is this so? What we are aligning with is that which we truly are, unconditional love, the creator, which is appearing as the entire experience. In aligning with our true nature, we feel inspiration or being or in spirit. This alignment, one thought at a time, so to speak, reveals our true nature to us, the infinitude that was forgotten, precisely by appearing as experience or creation. When we are expressing and focusing upon that which we desire to create and experience, we are, in a very literal sense, plugged in or connected or remembered with the creator of all that is, infinite intelligence in feeling which is ever present and always guiding via what we call feeling or sensation or, if you will, sensational guidance. You can forget who you really are, but you can never actually not be you. Consider you and you does not make for an experience. For there to be experience, the experience must appear to be other than you. So perfection experiences imperfection. Absolute love experiences love as if a product of relation. Infinite intelligence experiences thought 
an infinite being experiences lifetimes. The true nature is never truly veiled because there is feeling. And as thoughts appear, you can feel the alignment or discord as you focus on each thought. This is squarely why we feel the discord or offness and eventual stuckness of a belief, because the thought is in discord with the actual truth we are, and so we feel it accordingly. Also consider what makes a belief difficult to spot or recognize is that the true nature of a belief is that it's believed to be true, as in what's actual. Now let's zoom in a bit more and uncover more specifically how some beliefs are in discord with aspects of the true nature and how to align them and feel relief and resonance with your being, rather than resistance or suffering. For this next clip, I'm not going to narrate, but I do suggest rewinding the video and watching this short clip more than once to take in the nuance specifically in regard to how different facets of our being are felt and how they relate to thoughts we focus on about ourselves and about what we want to create. Keep in mind the discord and alignment in feeling and that you could pop just about any thought in as an example. Bring this to your life and your direct experience by considering some thoughts that you feel discord with and recognizing the aspect of your true nature the thoughts are out of alignment with. Consider some repeating thoughts or beliefs you're experiencing, which might leave you feeling discouraged or stuck, and see if you can feel some truth or facets of your true nature, and notice how it feels to shift focus to what you do want to create and experience. That's it for today's video, and if you liked it, please keep in mind that there are more parts to come in this How You Create Your Reality series. Please consider subscribing and clicking like, and also clicking on notifications if you would like to see the next video as soon as it's done. Also, please check out the tools which coincide with this video at actualityofbeing.com. And if you're interested in receiving an email when my book is finished, you can add your email address through the site. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. It really is encouraging and very much appreciated.